that is why we come to church that is why we pray that is why we read the bible because we want god to speak to us so when we yeah oh i can take it out huh okay yeah can't hear me without my mask huh? okay move free <laughs> okay um so what we want to what i want to do is i want to pray a little bit and i want you to pray with me and then say lord i want you to speak to me uh, from your word it's a very simple thing so why are you doing this kind of thing it's a simple thing but when we do it the lord will bless us tremendously amen hallelujah so for those of you who can pray in tongues you can join with me and pray in tongues if you can't don't, no problem just say i worship you lord i thank you for your word i want to receive your word are you ready Okay, let's pray. Shikaba kurobo satara ba shakara bari andai. Kiraba turobo karamba shakerebo so torobo hatara ba shakara bari andai. Raba turobo so torobo shakara ba sikara ba kurobo so torobo ri andai. Lord, we praise you. We worship you this morning. We lift up your holy name, O oh God. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness, your favor on our life today, O oh God. Father, I just want to lift up SLA into your hands, every precious man, woman, boy, and girl in this church, O oh Father. And Father, even right now, we come before you. You, Lord, before we even hear the word, we want to ex exalt your name, O oh God. We want to lift up your name, hallelujah. Father, this is your church, this is your spirit, this is your word, O oh God. And Father, we need your Holy Spirit's help to understand your word, hallelujah. So just repeat after me. Say, Dear God in heaven, please reveal to me your word this morning. Speak to me a word into my heart. Let me hear your voice speaking into my heart. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Let's give God a big hand clap and say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So is this on? Do I need to press something? Oh, the side. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Ah, okay. So you all can take it off now. Let's take it off. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Friends, today I want to share with you a message called What Faith Did. And we're going to look through certain parts of, or maybe the whole chapter of Hebrews chapter 11. And how many of you he here know that as Christians, we are called to, be, to live by faith? Do you know that? Christians are called to live by faith. Many of us sometimes forget that because uh, we are living in a modern world, and sometimes we forget that we are called to live by faith. You know, uh, just this week, I was reading the Bible, and I came to this place where David was praying, and he was crying and he was saying, Lord, I'm sick, please heal me. And he was mentioning how he was sick, what sickness he was having. And I was looking at it, I said, I think this guy is having an infection. A little bit of antibiotics will solve his problem. So as I was reading it, he was telling me, this is burning, that is burning, this is paining. So I was like, oh, this is probably an infection that David was having. And then as I was looking at it, I just had this thought about antibiotics and then I left it. Then later I went to pray. And as I began to pray, and I just began to worship the Lord, suddenly the Lord spoke to me something. He said, if you were living 300 years ago, every little pain in your body, you will pray to me. Because back then, got no antibiotics, no Panadol, no, no MRI, no, you, every little thing. Just 300 years ago, they didn't have all these things that we have today, or even 200 years ago. Do you understand what I'm trying to say or not? We will rely on God. If you were a, and I were a Christian 300 years ago or 200 years ago, whatever medical things that we have today don't have back then. So just imagine King David's time 3,500 years ago. They had nothing. So anything that goes wrong in their body, Lord, <laughs> everything in their life, Lord, help me. Here pain, that pain, every pain. And they will just suffer through it and they will believe in God. So as I was praying, the Lord was showing me this. He said, many people will come to me only when the doctor said, I don't know what's wrong with you. Lah. Then we come to go, Lord, please help me. The doctor said, you don't know what to do. <laughs> Last week, I shared a message somewhere. It was on suffering. That God will use the sufferings that we are facing 
to help us, mold us, shape us. And along with this message that the Lord spoke to me, the Lord was just telling me, we live in the modern times, if we are living now in modern times, where we kind of rely less on God. If you have this problem, you go to this person. You have that problem, you go to this person. And we've got a lot of things to help us. And in these modern times as we are living, where we rely less on God, it doesn't change the fact that God wants to build our faith as He did with the people of the ancient times, from the time of Adam till, the th- for, till now, and even till the future. God wants to use everything in our life to speak to us, to help us, to change us, and to mold us. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Whatever you are facing right now in your life, and maybe if it's not good, the Lord is going to use those things to shape us and to mold us. Can you say amen to that? God wants to do that because He wants to build our faith. As I was praying that prayer and I'm finishing my prayer in the morning, uh, I was just going to close up and then I was just had a thought in my head, if all the oxygen suddenly goes out of this room where I'm in, what will happen to me? If I've got no more oxygen, I will be on the floor. Then suddenly another thought came to me, what happens something happened to the atmosphere and then there's no more oxygen in the world? All of us will be gone. And the, what, I was thinking, why is this thought coming to my mind? And the Lord was just telling me, you need to realize how fragile your life is. You are actually already having faith because we are having faith that when we wake up in the morning, got oxygen. <laughs> when we are sleeping in the night, got oxygen. We are, we are believing that this world will go on. And because of it, we kind of feel like, oh, yeah, we are strong, we are okay. But actually, it's very, very fragile. Our life is very, very fragile. So as I was worshipping the Lord and I was praying, the Lord was just telling me, I'm going to build your faith. Every Christian's life, I'm going to build your faith. I'm going to use everything in your life that you're facing to build your faith. And you have to realize that you are called to live a life of faith. Can you say amen to that? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm called to live a life of faith. Amen, amen. Father, I praise you for this day. I praise you for this time, Lord. Holy Spirit, I, I want to ask, oh Lord, and let you know our inability to learn about faith or even to understand about faith. I pray to you right now, even in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve could not do the right thing, oh Lord. It comes from that, from that time till now, oh Father. And I come to you with my brothers and sisters and we say, Lord, of our inability to, to walk in faith, our inability to trust in you, so that, Lord, today, this morning, something will happen to us in our life, oh God. That we will receive faith from God into our life today. That today, something will happen in our faith life, oh God. That, Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit will come and begin to help us to walk by faith. Hallelujah. That the Holy Spirit will help us to see beyond, oh God, what we are facing today in our life. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, why faith? Why must we build our faith? Why must our faith be tested? Sometimes, you know, some Christians, not you, huh? sometimes some Christians might say, you know, it's an offense, you know. Why a uh, Christian? Uh, everything must have faith. I go to school, must have faith. Go to work, must have faith. You know, pray, everything must have faith. Sometimes we wonder, as Christians, why? Why? Why is this all the time people tell us we must have faith in God? Because the answer to that is, we of all the people groups in the world or all the religions in the world, we are the only people group that talk about dying and going to heaven. You don't hear any religious group talking about us dying and going to heaven and going to a better place and going to a place where we will live with God. There's only one people group or one religion in the world that offers heaven openly. In fact, if you look at all the other religions, they will tell you that you will go actually underground that you will go down, you won't go up. Christianity is the only religion that promises us that we are going to go up, that we are going to go and live with God in heaven. And I'm going to make a statement right now. There is only one way to live in heaven, and that is by faith. You ask the question, Lord, why everything in my life must have faith? Why everything must believe? Because we are going to live with God in heaven. Amen? Let me put it another way. Heaven knows all of us by our faith. Heaven knows us. How, you want to know how heaven knows you? You want to know? If sometimes some people think of Mother Teresa. 
she did so much of good work in India, you know, with those untouchable people and all that. You think, you think and I think God will know us by the things that we do. I want to tell you today as I'm going to present to you, the Lord knows you and me by our faith. He does not know you because you're so smart to buy 10 properties. You're so smart to invest your money and double and triple your money. You're so smart, your, your IQ is very high. He said, this guy, uh, IQ very high, I'm so happy. God knows people by their faith. God knows us by our faith. Let's begin. And uh, can we start? Okay, I'm, I got uh, almost the whole of Hebrews chapter 11. I want you to join me and read together, okay? One, two, go. For by it, men of old gained approval. The it here is faith. The whole Hebrews chapter 11 is about the men of faith, if you remember. And I want you to see in different versions of the Bible what they say. For by it, men of old gained approval. Through their faith, the people in days of old, old, old earned a good reputation. This is what the ancients were commended for. It was by their faith that people of ancient times won God's approval. Friends, different versions, but they're saying the same thing. I want you to look at the first two verses. Gained approval to who? Earned a good reputation to who? Do you know? For by it, that means faith, the men of old gained approval. Uh, through their faith, the people of old, old earned a good reputation. With who? With their friends or what? Who they earned a good reputation with? They earned a good reputation with God. They are showing you all the verses here where how the people of old got the recognition of heaven, got God's view, how heaven looked at them. Heaven knows us by our faith. Do you all remember a famous verse in the Bible? When we go up to heaven, we always say, God will say to us, well done, my good and rich servant. Well done, my good and healthy servant. Well done, my good and, you know, investment master uh, servant. What did God say? Well done, my good and faithful. Jesus said when he comes back to the earth, he's going to look for what? Faith. Heaven looks for faithfulness, looks for faith. Sometimes in today's world, you can look at your phone and see everybody enjoying a great life. And maybe we don't have such a great life. Lah, huh? So we look, wow, you enjoy huh, your great life. And we feel maybe small. And we feel, you know, I'm not as big as that person. You know, that person is better than me. And this person is better than me. We don't understand. Heaven is not looking at all those things. Heaven is looking at who has faith in God. That's how He knows us. You all remember the story of that rich man who died and then the poor man, I think Lazarus, by standing at the gate or something, he was there, only can smell the food. That guy who was a bum, he was sitting at the gate, did nothing, they both died. The rich man ended up in the fire and Lazarus was there in the paradise. The Lazarus had faith in God. Can you all see this or not? Sometimes we are filled with some, so much of in feeling of like, you know what, everybody feels like so small, some people. Oh, I'm a nobody, la. I'm a nobody. That is because we judge with each other. <laughs> That's why we compare with each other. That guy is more handsome than me. That girl is so beautiful. Oh, la, 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 la. oh this got car, got house, got this, got that. We don't understand the way heaven looks. Heaven is looking at who has faith, who is faithful. Can you say amen to that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why it is so important today, brothers and sisters, for you and me to consider what the Lord allows us to go through. Do you hear what I said? That's why it is important for us to consider very carefully what the Lord allows us to go through. What did the Lord allow Noah to go through? What did the Lord allow Joseph to go through? What did the Lord allow Abraham to go through? What the Lord allowed Paul to go through? What the Lord allowed Peter to go through? What the Lord allowed John to go through? You know their life, isn't it? All the things they went through. I ask you the same question. Are you considering what the Lord has asked you to go through in your life? 
it is those things that you are having in your life that is, God is going to see your faith and my faith. You and I are not going to come to Port Dixon. Yeah, Port Dixon is close to here, right? And suddenly, you, God is going to say, oh, you are going to open up the sea. We're gonna, you're going to open it and then you're going to walk from here to Medan. Nobody is going to get that kind of thing from the Lord. It's what we are facing in our life. That guy with the opening the water was Moses. He did it and it's gone. It's finished. We are not going to get open sea. <laughs> We're going to get other things. Do you get what I'm trying to say? God is going to use what we have in our life to build our faith. The ancient people gained uh, approval with God by their faith. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, let's read together. One to go. Then he touched their eyes, saying, It shall be done to you according to your faith. Jesus said this, things will happen to you in your life according to your faith. Things will happen to you in your life according to your faith. We get to choose how our life is going to get done. Just imagine when God came to Abram and said, Abram, you are going to have a son. And Abram heard it? No, I cannot. Then the Lord said, yes, Abram, your wife, even though she's very old, she will give birth to a baby boy for you. Ayoh, even if heaven comes also, it will never happen. Ah. She's 90 years old, already finished all the things. The lady thinks all over. So just imagine if Abraham said like that to the Lord, what will happen? Nothing. <laughs> it shall be done according to your faith. That's what Jesus said over that, that person. Our life, what will happen to us, will be according to our faith. Now I'm going to share with you and begin step by step we're going to go through. And I pray that you will catch something out of this today. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Just now I asked you all to read. The sound is level. It's like very small. So I hope the sound level will go up higher now, okay? All right? You're not reading for me, you know. You're reading for yourself and for the Lord. One, two, go. And without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. Him. The first thing I want to share with you here is faith pleases God. See, believing faith that believes God exists and that He wants to reward those who are constantly looking for Him. If you ever, ever, ever want to know how to begin receiving from the Lord, there are many, many Christians who are going to church, doing everything they have to do as a Christian, and they don't know how to receive from the Lord. If you are ever having a problem with receiving from the Lord, it's right here in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. And what does it say? It says, if you don't have faith, it is impossible to please God. That means a Christian must make allowance or must believe and must say, Lord, I, I accept that I will walk by faith. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. And you, this is the key thing. You must believe that God exists and that He wants to reward you. He wants to bless you. Can you say amen to that again? Hallelujah. Let's go. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's begin now. Hebrews 11 verse 1. One to go. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The writer to the Hebrews begins the book, the, the chapter 11 of Hebrews with, now this is faith. It is an assurance of what you're hoping for. It's a conviction of the things not seen. I get, we get two points from here. Faith is believing when I can't see it. Number two, faith is getting peace and a strong inner belief. There are many, you and I can say, Lord, I'm going to pray for $10 million. We can pray for anything that we want. You, nobody can stop anybody from praying. But the person that prays and receives and the person that is doing wishful thinking are both on different ends. You say, how do I pray in such a way? How do I have faith in God in such a way that I can bring something from God's realm into my house today? How am I going to do it? It's here in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. It teaches us, now this is faith, that you have peace after you have prayed and assurance inside of you. It, you have a conviction. We are, they say it this way, 
I know in my spirit, I know inside of me, I know deep down inside of me, I got an assurance, a conviction, as though it's so real, I can taste it, it's going to happen for me. Have you ever heard anybody who received any prize or something they won, then they'll say this to you, you know, always uh, I believe this was going to happen. Have you ever read stories like this? What are they actually having? They are having a conviction inside of them. They are having a strong inner belief inside of them. Can you see this? Faith is believing when I can't see it. Faith is getting peace and strong inner belief. The next one, faith is believing the invisible supernatural realm can manifest in the natural temporal realm. Faith is believing the invisible supernatural realm can manifest in the natural temporal realm. Where is that? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, he goes on to explain something astounding. He says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. The writer to the Hebrews is giving you a thought to think of. He says, you know, our whole world today, our world, uh, the moon, the planets, we can touch it, we can hold it. It's a thing that you can see and you can touch. It was made from something invisible. It was made from the Word of God. What you can see today in our world came from the invisible realm. Can you understand this? How does this help us in our life when we are praying for something? We are believing for a healing. We are believing for a job or finances. You need something from the invisible realm that you don't have to come inside the natural realm. How are you going to do it? The Bible is teaching us. It's what? By faith. And faith by how? By believing that God made the visible world by invisible things. Our Lord Jesus Christ operated in this power when He was on this earth. That's how he could heal people. That's how he could walk on water. That's how he could tell the wind, the wind and the waves to stop. Because the invisible, super, he believed in the invisible supernatural realm can in, invade the natural realm. That's why most of us Christians, when we are going through trouble and difficulty and pain, we'll just pray and say, God, please help me, please help me. It's good to pray to Lord, please help me. But you must also believe with all your heart, that the invisible supernatural realm where God is living can invade your life and your home. Hallelujah. If many people, they, you know, like these kind of things is hard for people to understand. But everybody understands about charm. Everybody understands about BOMO. You talk about BOMO and talk about charm, charm everybody, oh, 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 neighbor put BOMO, BOMO on me. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. You talk this, we speak this kind of things, everybody says, oh, what are you talking about? Huh? Ah, ah, I don't know what you're saying. Ah. But you talk about BOMO and you talk about charm, everybody wake up already. Do you know why? Because you understand the spirit world. You understand the demonic world, it's real, right? So what are they doing? They are, they are touching the invisible supernatural realm on the dark side to do a job for them. And Christian people are so difficult to believe. That God wants to invade your house, your business, your church, your life inside of you with His invisible supernatural power. Can you say amen to that? When Christians begin to believe in the word of the Lord like this, then you can see things just open and change in front of you. <clears throat> can we go to the next one? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4a. I'm just taking the first part of it. Let's read together. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. So for this one, what is this? Faith is giving to God out of what we have in faith. Giving, out to, giving to God out of what we have in faith. You know, when the writer to the Hebrews was told by the Lord, can you write this Hebrews out? And he's thinking, we are going to do the heroes of faith in the Bible. And says, who shall I start with, Lord? So the first person that comes to my mind is Adam and Eve. And then the writer says, oh, no, 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 no. Let's not put Adam and Eve. Why, why Adam and Eve cannot be in the heroes of faith? You know the answer, right? Because they ate the wrong fruit. 
So uh, the writer to Hebrews says, no, 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 we cannot start with Adam and Eve. So who he starts with? He starts with Adam's son. What's his name? Abel. Why is, you know, this uh, chap Abel, he never even got a chance to live in our world. You know what happened, right? His brother killed him. But this man, Abel, his name is here, and we have been preaching and talking about him for 6,000 years. Why? How come? Why are we talking about this guy, Abel? Because he was a man of faith. Can you see this? How important our faith is to heaven? How important our faith is to God? Next one. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. It says, It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. So what is this? Living a faith is living to please God. We don't know much about this chap, but he lived 365 days in contact with the Lord until, I don't know, we don't know what happened, but the Lord actually took him off. Just take him off. He didn't die. Just took him off. But he was known as a person who pleased God. If you are a person that wants to please God, this is your leader of faith, Enoch, who lived his whole life, 365 years, to living to please him. So faith is living to please God. The next one, Hebrews chapter 11. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about the things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. From this, we see two things, very important. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. God told Noah to build a boat for 120 years. He was building this big boat. Every, for 120 years, they would have had festivals. They would have all kinds of things. And he says, Lord, we don't have any rain in this place. Lord, what kind of uh, project is this for so long? And then, you know, we never had a flood before. Faith is obeying God when I don't understand it. Can you say amen to that? So he just kept on doing what God asked him to do for 120 years. The second part, by his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world. When we begin to live by faith, our living, we live in such a way that it actually will show up the unsaved. So when they told Noah, Noah, what is this? You're building a boat. Crazy guy. Come and join us for our festival. He said, sorry, I've got to go and build my boat. Noah, come and join us in this. No, I cannot. I have to build my boat. What kind of family is this? Noah, you're doing a wasted project, wasting your time in all these things. So, what happened was, he was building his boat, minding his own business. I keep looking at this, looks like a boat. I don't know. Looks like the ark, I thought, the wall of the wood. <laughs> so, uh, he said, you, you, keep building the, you keep building this boat, you don't want to join us in anything. And he says, hey, I'm minding my own business, building the boat. Why is it making you angry? Ah, because the way his life and his family, when they were committed to building the ark, it made everybody angry. He made all of them upset with what he is doing. When we choose to live by faith, remember something. It will show up the people of the world who are unrighteous. They will get angry with your lifestyle. So don't get shocked about it. Don't get shocked about it. Hebrews chapter 11, 8 to 9. It was by faith that Abraham, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith for he was like a foreigner living in tents. As so did Isaac and Jacob who inherited the same promise. What we get from this is faith is obeying and going when I don't have all the answers. Sometimes you're called to go to another state. Sometimes you're called to go to another company. Sometimes you're called to go to another country. If God has called you and opened up the thing for you, sometimes faith is obeying and going when we don't have all the answers. Number two, if you can see verse 9, it says, when he reached there, he had to live by faith also because he was a foreigner living in tents. Many people have said, God called me to go somewhere. And finally, when they got there, they said, Allah, ma, this is what he called me to. Uh-oh. Uh Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldees to the Canaan land and he had to live in a tent. 
Maybe Abraham was thinking, the Lord is going to put out the red carpet for me because I sacrificed so much for him. I left my place and I came here, you know, to follow what the Lord is saying. And then I have to live like a foreigner in a tent. And some of God promised me millions of descendants. He promised me a kingdom. He promised me kings will be in my family line. And then he comes to the Canaan land and he has to live in a tent his whole life. And the Bible says what there? Maybe we might not like it, but it's there. <laughs> he lived there by that means while he was sitting in his tent, he had to believe, I am the father of nations. Not easy. Can you understand what I'm trying to explain to you? He, his life there, he had to live by faith. That's why some of us get offended sometimes. Not us, so all of us, all the time. Sometimes it comes to us, Lord, why are everything must have faith? <laughs> My whole life, everything must have faith. Why can't I just go to the doctor and say, ah, okay, take this medicine, you'll be okay. No. Go and take the medicine, still not okay. Allah, ma. And I go here, you'll have, okay, uh, you sign the contract, everything perfect. Oh, yeah, I'm going to work like this, this amount of money. You end up going to the company. They got a whole another thing they never told you about. So why like this? Huh? So sometimes we get uh, offended that we have to live a life of faith, not realizing that all the people be before us who were with God lived by faith in everything in their life. In that message that I was sharing a few couple of weeks ago about suffering, I said some of the Christians believe sometimes, I oh, you know, if I have a lot of money or like that guy, you know, you see, he's, he's like multi-millionaire, la, billionaire, la, whatever, la, then everything will be okay. Many people don't understand that the bigger your company is, it's a bigger responsibility on your life. The more money you have, the more people are under you, you have to have the payroll, you have... If you have a small company and something goes wrong, it's a $100 mistake or $1,000 mistake. If you have a gigantic company, one mistake, tens and $20 million must go out. You see, the re recent thing in our government, they had to take over the bow state, the, the ships. They said, we have to take the, ship, the shipping over I don't, because we already sunk in $6 billion into it. You see? Many people don't think that if you are, wow, I'm so rich, I have everything, I can be sit down and relax in my life. They don't understand. I think the rich man will call you and say, come, 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 sit down. I, I show you my problem. Come, sit down. Right, this is my problem. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're like, oh, okay, okay. I go back home. I sit down there. Do you understand what I'm trying to say or not? We seem to think that even like the people who are like uh, very rich, no care in the world or whatever, right? They don't have to have faith. It's not true. Everybody in this world has to have faith. Can you say amen to that? Whether we like it or not. Whether we are even with the Lord or not. I remember when I was taking, planning for the trip to go to the Holy Land, one lady was standing, oh, I'm so frightened, la. maybe an aeroplane crash. So one lady, hi, yeah, you, you go outside the church here, I can't knock you down, I also can die. Ma. Then she said, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, that's how it is, it comes to our mind, not because, we, not because we want to, it comes to our mind, this kind of thing. Abraham had faith in God when obeying and going when he didn't have all the answers. The Bible says he didn't even know where he was going. Just follow the Lord. Faith is persistently obeying when the way is rough. The next one. This is the, this is the shock, shocking one. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations. A city designed and built by God. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth, but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. You know where is Abraham? Three, how many? How many? 4,000 years ago. You know what is this? We also not just see the new city. You know how far it is if you put a timeline here? Abraham is here, here, we are here. The city is somewhere there. And the Bible is telling us, Abraham was seeing far into the future for the city that he would have. Alama, he doesn't even have the, real, the natural Jerusalem also. But God was showing him something about the future city. Look what it says that Faith is believing still, even though the full promise was not realized. You see, in verse 13, all these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all in a distance and they welcomed it. 
for this morning in this place, this might be the most important thing that you hear today. Because I have heard people come up to me and tell me, I have prayed for God for my child, I prayed for God for my business, I prayed this, 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 and then everybody prayed, and then after that, I lost everything, and I cannot even believe in God anymore. Look, he's telling us, Father Abraham and all the people of faith, some of them, they never fully receive what God promised them, but yet they still believe. Can you see this? How important it is? Sometimes when certain things that we pray for, I remember one very sad case was a church that we were involved in, and everybody went like rotation basis to go to the hospital and pray for so-and-so, but the so-and-so died. And after that, right, everybody in the church, without saying a word, all was broken inside. Of course, they were asking this question, how come everybody go and pray also and then the person cannot recover? They started to doubt even God. You see what the Bible is saying? Abraham believed, never received the full promise, yet he still believed. But he has something that he was looking at. What is it? Faith is looking forward to our eternal home in heaven, the heavenly city. Oh, hallelujah. So when Abraham did not get everything that God showed him that he was going to get, Abraham said, God, I'm looking forward to what you showed me, that one day we are going to have a heavenly city. That means if I don't get everything here, you will make it up for me in the heavenly city. It's as though God showed him a glimpse and showed him maybe a vision or something. Abraham, you are going to have Isaac. Isaac is going to have Jacob. Jacob is going to have 12 sons. 12 sons are going to have the nation of Israel. And then from the nature of Israel, you're going to have kings. And from the king's line, Jesus is going to come, the king that will rule forever. And Abraham is looking at all this. Wow, wow, wow. From me, from me, a man, 100 years old. Really, a prosper. Yeah, yeah, I believe, I believe, I believe. And then God said, Abraham, while you are doing this natural project here to build Jerusalem la, and have you know, all the family and children, I also got a project. He said, I'm also building a city like you. My one is called New Jerusalem. And that New Jerusalem, all the Jewish people and all the Gentile people can come and live inside. And then when Abraham maybe saw all this, he said, God, I'm willing to give up the natural one to enter into the spiritual one. Can you see this? Look at the words. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. Many Christians don't come to this place in their faith. That's why we say, you know, sometimes like in a church, like a pastor fall or a worship leader is like maybe they want to give up or something. In, some, in America, we see a lot of these cases, right? The moment the, from the pulpit somebody fall, the people in the, in, in the church also fall. Oh, how come God can let them fall? So we also fall. That means their faith is based on other things and not on God. You see? These people, they go, whatever God promised, they say yes, and then God never give it to them, and they say, never mind, we are waiting for the eternal home. What kind of faith is this, brothers and sisters? What kind of faith is this, brothers and sisters? This is the God kind of faith. Hallelujah. This is the faith that we all must have. Can you say amen to that? This is what in the end times God is looking for men and women that will begin to rise up and say, God, I cannot see these things that you are telling me or even we are praying for, but I still trust and believe in you. Lord, all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. I believe it is going to happen. That's what happens to you. And the, your life begins to move by how you believe. Jesus said, it will be done according to you. Uh, it will be done to you according to your faith. Today, I tell you more and more, not you, uh, my, myself, every little thing. That day I was praying, and I, I was like, I don't know whether it's prophetic or what, but when I was praying, sometimes I, I, I move a bit. So when I'm praying, I suddenly I say, hey, 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 don't touch me. I was like, hey, hey, don't touch me. Hey. So I was wondering, in my spirit as I was praying, you know, I was just like praying in tongues. And I was like, hey, hey, don't touch me. Uh. Uh, stay away. So I was like, after I was praying, 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 and then I was, the Holy Spirit was then telling me, ah, see, Many of y'all are like this. He cannot touch you. No, that's what it was when I was praying. That's what, if somebody can come here, I'll poke them. No? Anybody want a demo? Come, I'll do. If somebody's standing, I'll tell you. I'll poke you. Ah, don't touch me. So God told me. So when I was praying, I was like, Lord, what kind of thing I'm receiving here? What is this? I don't understand. He says, many of you Christians cannot be touched. Because if I touch a little bit of you, you start crying already. Start moaning, groaning. Do you understand what I'm saying or not? Yeah, everything must be perfect. Everything in the life must be perfect. It says, you don't understand who you're following. You don't understand what kingdom you're in. I will touch everything of yours. 
Do you understand what I'm saying, friends? He said, why, uh, Brother Darren, why are you saying like this? Why, why will God do that? Because God is going to perfect us for the new kingdom. He's going to prepare us to live in heaven with God. Do, did you forget that Lucifer himself was living with the glorious God and Lucifer fell from there? What happened to Lucifer's fate in heaven? Because remember, heaven records our fate. Heaven knows our fate. Lucifer was having faith, living with God in heaven, and suddenly some point happened to him. Don't know what happened to the guy. And then he says, I don't want to trust God. I believe in God anymore. God is a liar, whatever it is. Ended up, he's the liar, not God. Before, as we come into the end times, brothers and sisters, everything in our life will be touched by the Lord. For what purpose? So that you will be tried, you'll be tested, to be found perfect for the kingdom of heaven. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Because sometimes we want answers, you know, God, why, Lord? Why? Why is this happening? Why am I going through this suffering? Lord, why are you calling me? How come that our neighbor is okay? How come my friend is okay? Church people are okay. How come I am going through this? You know, sometimes when we go through problem, we feel we are the only one in the world going through the problem. Sometimes we feel like that, right? I am like that sometimes. I always will say, I'll stand outside my gate, I'll look out. Is he having the problem I'm having? I literally go outside my house, stand at the gate, I'll tell the Lord. I was talking to the Lord, praying inside the house, then I'll walk outside. I say, God, is that my neighbor there having this problem? Is that guy having? No, only me. Because sometimes we feel like that. You know what I mean? So I'll tell him, how come? Because God wants to shape us, mold us, and bless us. Can you say amen, hallelujah? We must submit to the life of faith. Many Christians, even myself when I was growing up, nobody explained to me that I must submit to the life of faith. Nobody told me I must submit to the life of faith. It would have been easier for me if I knew I have to submit to the life of faith. Then I won't ask so many questions. Why, 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 why? Everything or why? Now I know why. The why is because God says, I need to touch you. I need to... What do you think God was doing with all these people? For Adam and Eve told Cain and Abel, Cain, Abel, you, God likes the lamb, uh, lamb chops. He wants you to offer the lamb chops to him. So Abel is listening to it. He says, okay, I will, I will offer. Then Cain is saying, hey, I'm growing all these plants and vegetables. He is, gr he is growing, having all the sheep. Now you mean I must go and ask him to give me one lamb or buy from him one lamb and then offer to God? No, 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 no. God must accept this one I give him. Let he, he is a farmer. He got the sheep. Let him give that to the Lord. I will give this one to the Lord. And then when that day came and he offered the thing, the fire came from heaven and burnt up Abel's offering and until it was gone already. He makan, the fire ate the whole thing up. And then Cain is looking. His vegetable is still there. He said, why? Huh? Why? Huh? See? Why? Huh? Why? Why? Why all this problem? After this problem, then he's looking at his brother. Wow, oh, God accepted yours. Huh? Then anger, hatred, resentment. He said, come Abel, let's go into the field. I'll talk to you something. We talk about uh, what father and mother is doing. Then suddenly take one thing. Pow, and whack him and kill him. We want to know, why is this happening to us? If today Abel in heaven is having a wonderful time in heaven with the Lord. He said, God, I mean the heroes of faith. I never knew. I couldn't even live properly in the world. He said, yeah, but you are in the hero of faith. Everybody will look at you as the, as the first one. Adam's son, Abel, that obeyed God and offered the sacrifice that God wanted. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice. When God was testing him, Abraham, who, were, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned, if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. So this one is the big one. This is where the father of faith <laughs> became the father of faith. When God gave him a son, and then ask him to go and sacrifice the son. You know the story. Lah, huh? This is what it says. Faith is walking with God and daring to believe the impossible. I sometimes think about this thing and I said, I don't even know whether I can do this thing. What about you? I, that's why I'll say when I come to this point, I'll say that that's why Abraham is called the father of faith. <laughs> that's why he's the father we look up to. I promise you at 90 years old and 100 years old and your wife got no more, you know, the... the what do you call it? The, the, the things to have a baby. All they don't have. I promise you, he waits so long, then they do a mistake with uh, Ishmael. And then after that, he gives you the son, 
And then he says, Wow, now this Isaac laughter is going to bring all the descendants. Hallelujah. Then God says, go and sacrifice him. See how God must touch. He's, you know, how God must touch. God is touching Abraham. Abraham could say, hey, don't touch me. Don't, don't, don't. Don't touch me, please. Don't touch me. Don't touch these things. Don't touch. You can touch everything. Touch Sarah. She was the one who made me go and marry Hagar and produce Ishmael. Touch her. Don't touch my son Isaac. I love Isaac too much. Don't touch him. You know, don't touch me. But God said, take him and go and sacrifice. So what God was doing, not only God was touching him, God was, God was preparing the father of faith for us. Not for him. He said, oh, Abraham, poor guy, he suffered. He went through the suffering for you and me because Abraham became the father of all of us who have faith in God. Do you understand? God has faith, but here God gave us a father of faith for us to look up to. You know, can you imagine this man is walking and he's going and he's thinking, I'm going to kill my son. And then what? Uh, what's going to happen? My wife is going to kill me after that. What is going to happen? He's thinking all kinds of things. Why would God do such a thing? Only the hidden pagan gods offer a child sacrifice. Why would the God of heaven ask me to do this kind of horrible thing? Oh, I don't understand. But faith is obeying anyway. Faith is persistent. Faith is keep going. So he keep going. And then suddenly he thought, ah, I think I know what will happen. I will kill the boy and then God will resurrect him again. Can you imagine what kind of father of faith this is? Uh? You give me the son, you ask me to, to sacrifice the son, and even at that point, he doesn't break his faith. Now he's thinking something different. He says, I'll kill him and resurrection will take place. You know the story. So Abraham for here, faith is walking with God and daring to believe the impossible. Hallelujah. There are many of you, some of you here that have gone through things and you also know what is this talking about. You've gone through something really terrible in your life and you know what faith is. Some of us are growing in our faith. So praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, as we go on, it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. I really encourage you all to read Hebrews chapter 11 today before you go to sleep. It's powerful. Can you see here what is happening to this guy? First of all, his father and mother, by faith, hid him to protect him to, so that he can live. Then he says, by faith, Moses grew up. Moses could have had an easy life living in the palace. But he says, I'm going to give it up and I'm going to suffer with God's people. And look at verse 26, what the writer to the Hebrews does. Again, Moses is here in Bible timeline. Jesus is here. You know, we are here. And the writer to the Hebrews is saying, whatever Moses suffered in his life, it was not in vain because he was suffering for Jesus Christ. Two or three weeks ago when I shared this message on suffering, this was one of the points that it was, I was sharing with them. I said many of us don't believe that whatever we are suffering counts for heaven. We don't value our suffering. We don't value what God put us through. And the writer to the Hebrews here is saying something astounding. He says, Moses is here, Jesus is here, Moses don't know who Jesus is. And the writer to the Hebrews says, everything that Moses suffered in his life, his mother suffered, everything that he suffered, he was suffering for Christ. If Moses, who didn't know who Jesus is, was suffering for Christ, what about you and me? Are you suffering today? Are you going through hardship today? Is there something in your life that you're going through? You, you are, oh my gosh. Brother Darren, you don't understand my life. How is it like? Are you suffering? Are you going through hardship, difficulty? Can you see it like this? He said, whatever you are suffering, you're suffering it unto Jesus Christ. When you have faith in what you are going in, you will be remembered by heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. As we come to the end times, God is already building. I can see already in all the different places. So God is already building the Christians that are willing to walk in faith, step out in faith. Because like what is going to happen in the future, we don't know actually what's going to happen really in the future, but we know the world, the way it's going on. You can see all kinds of strange things in the politics that's going on. And I tell you something, if we are not men and women of faith who have strong faith in God, how are we are going to go through what these jokers are going to put on the world? <laughs> How are we going to go through? How are we going to go through? It was by faith that Moses left 
the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill the firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel, Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls came crashing down. Faith is willing to suffer for the sake of Jesus Christ. A lot of people went through terrible things during the pandemic. And many Christians went through it. I can say to you today, whatever we went through, whatever hardship that we went through, and even now if you're going through a, a, any hardship, I pray that you will begin to see as you live the life of faith, Lord Jesus, I'm suffering, it, I'm suffering through this for your sake. And my life is being transformed by your spirit. Hallelujah. That I am being made ready for heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, we're going to close it now. Hebrews chapter 11, as, as uh, the writer to the Hebrew comes, Hebrews comes to the end. And then he also says himself, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions that quenched the flames of fire and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. Others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. Verse 38, they were what? They were too good for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. Now here it comes. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. The last part, without perfection, it just simply means these people of old, they never knew Jesus Christ like how we all know Jesus Christ. So he said, together we will all go into heaven. But my point today as we come to the close of this message of Hebrews chapter 11 on the walk of faith, all these people people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Their faith in God. Can I ask you some questions? But the answer is there already. With whom did these people earn a good reputation with? Who is a person? God. Heaven is watching who has faith in Him. What was the something better that they all were willing to say, God, you promised me this, I got some of the things, but Lord, everything you promised, I didn't receive. So, but never mind, we look forward to something better. What is that something better? He said, you prepared for us an eternal city. And of course, the something better would be Jesus Christ, because it's through Him that we can go into the eternal city in heaven. And how was all this achieved for all these people? By faith. Can you see, friends, how precious our faith is to heaven? Some of, you, some of us might be thinking, you know, I don't do much, la, this, la, that, la, but your faith is what God is looking at. Your faith is what God is working at. Because when we, go to the heaven, when we go to heaven, all the things that we accumulated in this world, everything that we have done, maybe we didn't do much, or maybe we did a lot, not one of those things can go to heaven with us. All that goes to heaven is us, our soul. So many of us are crying over, you know what that person said to me? You know how the boss is to me? You know this, you know? All these problems that we face is in the temporal world. It's only for a short period of time. After that, we leave this place and we go to the glorious place that God has prepared for us. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Yeah, let's give God a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Oh, the time is getting on. Sorry. I... I would just want you to read with me, because I, I said it's such a long one. This is the 14 things that I picked out that I shared with you.
Can we read it all together so that we can like remember it like a like a summary? Okay, one, two, go. Believing faith that believes God exists and He wants to reward those who are constantly looking for Him. Faith is believing when I can't see it. Faith is getting peace and a strong inner belief. Faith is believing that the invisible supernatural realm can manifest in the natural temporal realm. Faith is giving to God out of what we have in faith. Faith is living to please God. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Faith is living in such a way that it shows up the unsaved. Faith is obeying and going when I don't have all the answers. Faith is persistently obeying when the way is rough. Faith is believing still, even though the full promise was not realized. Faith is looking forward to our eternal home in heaven, the heavenly city. Faith is walking with God and daring to believe in the impossible. Faith is willing to suffer for the sake of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has this been good for you? You get something out of it today? And sometimes, I don't know, I cannot judge people by how, they, you know, when, I mean, I'm not asking you to jump up and clap and all that. <laughs> I'm just telling, I don't know how to judge people, but I just want to say to you, sometimes when, you sh when I share a message, some people get frightened. Whatever I'm sharing with you is not to actually make you frightened. It's to make you see that the call that God has called us to, and you're not alone. All the people in the Bible from Abel till today, till the future, are all going to be walking the walk of faith. And we are also called as a privileged one to join it. I tell you, I read something that day. I don't know where it was. It was like this. Uh, he says, uh, this guy was suffering and suffering and suffering. And he was, oh, I don't know why. Uh, I prayed so long. God, uh, help me. Uh, la, 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 la. He was suffering here. They're crying to everybody. Cell group crying. Uh, pastor crying. Everybody is crying. La. He said, I'm suffering. I'm just making up the story. But actually, it was a full story. I don't want to just tell you the whole story. But the gist is, he was so angry. God, why did God want to help me? Da, 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 all that. Okay. He cried so much. And then suddenly, he found out that where he was, was more beneficial to him after two years. And all the people that were with him are going to be in a worse problem than him in two years' time. After that, all the crying stopped. And all the suffering that he was going through, he said, I'll gladly take it. So I was reading the story, I said, see this guy? And then I said, see the human nature. See, when we don't get what we want, it's like, ah, 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 why God want to help me? But later, if you have some knowledge, right? that in two years' time, you are going to be better than those people, suddenly the problem is not a problem anymore. No, ah, no, I can take it. La. Don't worry. It's a bit of, little bit trouble only. La. Little bit trouble. But the day before, screaming and crying, oh, I cannot take this. La, 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 la. You understand what I'm trying to say or not? How the human nature can just turn like that. So I'm, oh, I'm going through such a hardship. Oh, hardship. God don't want to help me. Nobody want to help me. La, 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 la. But then later on, you find out the hardship you went through was for a reason. They were going to put you into a better place. Then suddenly the hardship, nah, nah, no problem, nah, don't worry. Small thing, small thing. The human nature can change like that, no? very fast. Oh. Very, choop, it can change like that. So that's why we need to understand who, what kind of person we are. You know? So that means I'm trying to tell you, sometimes whatever we are crying about may not be a cry. It should be, praise the Lord, counted worthy to go through this for you. Hallelujah. Because it's going to bring for me great reward and a great fruit. Hallelujah. Later on. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Okay, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Let's just stand up and just begin to pray. And let's just pray a simple prayer to the Lord. Father, I thank you for this um, day. I thank you for, I pray for every single person here listening to this message today in SLA. Father, I pray once again. If Lord, I pray that when they read Hebrews chapter 11, I pray that you will bless them with a revelation, even more than what we shared here today. I pray, oh God, for the, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that their faith grow in the name of Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us, O oh Lord, to be strong in the faith. Lord, especially for those of us that are going through difficulty and hardship, going through suffering, O oh God, going through pain, I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that God will give you a revelation. I pray that God will give you a revelation. He will speak to you in the night. He will give you a vision and a dream for the trouble that you are going through. Hallelujah. That your trouble will not be a trouble. Hallelujah. But it will be unto the glory of God. Hallelujah. And I pray that God's favor and grace will come upon you. Lord Jesus, you are not only the way, Lord, but you are also the light. 
And I pray for your light to shine on us even right now. I pray for the light of Christ to shine upon you and your family. And I pray for the light of Christ to dispel all darkness in your life. Hallelujah. I command every darkness to leave your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, show us the way that we should walk, O oh Lord. We are now here at this place, the middle of the year. Lord, we want to surrender to you the rest of our year into your hands, Father. We pray, O oh God, and ask for blessing and favor over the, this next uh, months before six months in front of us, O oh Father. We pray, O oh God, for your blessing over 2023, Father. We pray that in faith that the supernatural realm will invade our natural realm, O oh God. Father, we want to pray that miracles can take place still in this next six months, O oh God. We want to pray and open up our belief, O oh God, to say, God, you can come and invade our life with miracle. Hallelujah. Father, I'm asking for miracles for my brothers and sisters, even myself, O oh God, all the families that are represented here. Lord, that miracles will come to us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Can you just say this to me? Dear God in heaven, build my faith. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me to see beyond the trouble. Help me to see that your hand is on my life. That all things will work together for good to them that love God and who are called according to the purposes of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, my Father. I praise you for all the precious people and all the families that are here today, Father. Lord, they chose to come to church today. Hallelujah. They chose to come to a place where they can receive the blessing and the covering, oh God. Hallelujah. Many of us can choose to sleep at home, Lord, but we chose to come to church today. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, I pray for the glorious covering of the Lord upon each and every person and each and every family, that the precious blood of Jesus Christ will come upon you and your household. Hallelujah. That God will keep you safe from every attack of the enemy. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, God will cast it down. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I praise you and I worship you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. And everybody that believes says, Amen and Amen and Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I love you, Lord.